Nine News with Georgie Garden. Good evening. He was a class act both on and off the field and was for decades the voice of summer. In the early hours of this morning, Australia lost a true icon with the passing of Richie Benno, aged 84. His death prompted reaction from around the world as fans, players and politicians paid tribute to a remarkable man. He took us from black and white. Crowd were electrified as Benno takes a remarkable diving catch. And then gave us all the colour of cricket. Beautifully bowled, bit of spin. From the centre of the pitch, with bat and ball, to the commentary box. The man who summed up so well the very best of Australian sport. Skilled, modest, well-mannered, and with an unequalled insight into our summer game. He said, Ian, this is a very simple game, and the simpler you keep it, the better off you'll be. And I think he worked on that theory with life. Richie's formidable involvement in cricket lasted from his early teens until his growing battle with cancer gradually took him from us. If he had a son, he'd be very proud of his Richie Benner. He's had a great life and he'll be remembered as long as cricket's played. Richie's career spanned the generations because he was always relevant. Immersed in all the rules and unwritten traditions of cricket, but a man who also embraced new technology. Richie was a really intelligent guy, an economy of words, um, a great wordsmith. The thing I found about Richie Benno is it, it's, it's not what he says, it's what he doesn't say. His insights into cricket didn't just come out of the blue. He was also one of our finest players. Born at Penrith, raised around Parramatta, Richie came from a sporting family. Dad, Lou Benno, and Richie's brother John, also a test player, had that ultimate Australian breeding, backyard cricket. Richie made his first grade debut with Cumberland when he was only 16. It was the start of a wonderful, fruitful career. He was an aggressive lower order batsman, but it was the seemingly gentle, yet cunning art of leg spin bowling that was his signature. Playing for his country, he took 248 test wickets, a bowling average of 27. Benno prepares to bowl. Richie's test career spanned 12 years, from his 1952 debut against the West Indies until his retirement after the 1964 series against South Africa. A career highlight, playing in the first ever tied test between Australia and the Windies in Brisbane in 1960. One wicket left. Paul bowling the seventh ball to climb. It seemed as though the ground was full twice over that day. I reckon I've spoken to about 60,000 who all reckon they were there at the game. Retirement saw Richie flourish as a sports journalist and broadcaster in England before spearheading the game into a new era. Come on, Aussie, come on, come on. Kerry Packer's World Series cricket turned the game on its head. Richie's reputation played counterpoint to Kerry's tub-thumping approach as they battled the establishment. Gave it a cachet. It, 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 it suddenly gave it respectability. Behind the cameras in that era was David Hill, groundbreaking head of Nine's Wide World of Sports, then head of Fox Sports in America. Richie Benno could pick the mic up and describe a passage of play that you had just seen, but he gave it so much more. Hill and Ritchie worked hand in glove during the World Series days, moulding the way we watch cricket today. Ritchie's voice underpinned everything. It was reassuring and it was exciting and it was enlivening. He was the voice of summer. The Packer family never forgot Ritchie's role. James Packer today remembering him as a lovely, generous, caring human being. Imitation was the greatest form of affection Australia felt for Richie. The Richie impersonators were a summer institution. Welcome to the SCG. It's been a marvellous day of cricket here. The Richies are taking a little um, lap of honour. Comedian Billy Birmingham's salty language might have been a little rich for Richie. Two for 22. It's very important that you, you, the lips actually form into the shape of a cat's ass. So, two for 22. But Richie 
had his own wry way of making a point. Now, what would people from Mars think if they were to land here and see that happening on your television screen? A man for all seasons, Richie was loved even by the old enemy. Over many years, swapping our winters for commentating in the English summer. It's been a privilege to go into everyone's living room. It's been a great deal of fun. But not so for the batsman. McGrath has picked him up. When he retired over there, the Poms farewelled him almost as one of their own. Richie, our thanks and best wishes. In Australia, Richie has been treasured by the men at the very peak of the game. Well, that's out. Dennis Lilly passed Richie's bowling record and saluted him from the pitch. And uh, Richie Benno almost as delighted for Dennis Lilly as Dennis Lilly looks up and waves to Richie Benno. He's one of the best captains ever. As a commentator, you know, par excellence, uh, he, he had no peer. Today, the praise came from all ages of Australian cricket. Richie didn't invent the wheel, but he put rubber tyres on it and made it a lot easier for everybody else to live with. He, he played it the Australian way. You know, the collar was up, the buttons undone, you know, he carried himself well. His legacy will be very wide-ranging and uh, be bloody hard to replace. The 40 years of commentary, of which I spent 15 of them with him, um, I'll remember very fondly because he taught me a lot uh, as a commentator. He never taught, he never really uh, coached or taught, but he said, you might like to try it this way. The Shane Warne era was enough to warm an old leg spinner's heart. Richie loved it. He started off with the most beautiful delivery. He was also a quiet observer of what the fans were up to in the stands. Very nice thought, but uh, bigamy is out of the question. Today, Richie is being mourned by fans and the highest in the land. There would be very few Australians who have not passed a summer in the company of Richie Benno. Because it's hard to think of anybody in past decades, apart from Don Bradman, uh, who's been more immediately identifiable with the name of cricket. He was someone who is, by all reports, an incredible cricketer, a, a great leader, uh, and also someone that I've had the opportunity to listen to my whole life. Nine CEO David Gingell cherished Ritchie as the diamond in our cricket coverage and as a friend. Today saying he sat at the head of our table. We shall miss him dearly. <laughs> Australia began the second day of the final test match at 13 for two. Cricket might be our beautiful game, but in summer, Australia can be a harsh place to play it, as Richie grew to know only too well. I never, ever wore a cap on the field when I was playing, and um, I wish I had, uh, because uh, the skin cancers, uh, which I had then, got them as a young man, and um, that's a recurring thing now. If Richie's commentary is to be remembered, for one word, it is... Marvellous. And today, many found simple but very particular words to sum up Richie himself. A wonderful, I think. A genius. Thorough. Richie Benoit was panache. A gentleman. Talented. A gentleman. That's two. Cricket. There was one partnership for which Richie exceeded all others his long marriage to Daphne. I've had a lot of assistance along the way from Daphne, a splendid lady who is much loved. We are farewelling a legend. With flags at half-mast today at our famous cricket grounds, even in passing, Richie could never imagine he would be so well thought of. Apart from anything else, just think of all the fun I've had. Well, fittingly, Ken is at the SCG tonight. Good evening, Ken. Good evening to you, Georgie, and uh, I'm with a very special man, Michael Clark, and I know that he was very dear to you, uh, Richie Benno, as he has been to all Australian cricketers. He never imposed himself on you, but if you wanted a bit of advice, he was always there. Yeah, he certainly was. Uh, and I think, yeah, the one thing today has done, it, it's... Richie has reached so many people, you know, so many people that, that mightn't have watched too much cricket, but as soon as you heard that voice, you would run to the television. Um, you know, he will be loved and remembered for, for a long, long time. I don't think he'll ever be able to be replaced. You know, I've always seen Mr. Benno as the godfather of Australian cricket. 
I mean, the thing about him too, he was always relevant to all generations. I mean, he just, he, he, young, old, in between, he had something to say. He embraced new technology, he never forgot about the past. He was class. I agree 100%. I think that's the, the one thing about Richie that, that I love through the years, being lucky enough to spend a little bit of time with him, was he was able to look at the game for what it was right there and then. Um, he always had the respect for, for the past, but he watched the game grow and was able to analyse and, and see things that a lot of people couldn't see and um, I think a lot of today's players don't realise how great a player and captain Richie was. You know, we grew up with, with the voice and, and watch him on television as a commentator but, you know, he was a remarkable player as well and, and a wonderful captain for Australia. Yeah, and he was a leader of men. In many ways, the gentle art of spin bowling, but when he had to put the throat, the foot on the throat, he did. But he did it with, you know, a bit of dignity. He always left somebody with dignity. His, his greatest rivals, he left with them with something. Yeah, well, you talk about cricket being a gentleman's game, and I think Richie was the pinnacle of that. I think he showed that, on, he had showed that on and off the field. I think he loved the attacking style of, of Australian cricket, the way the, the Australian way is about attacking and trying to win games of cricket. And I think Richie certainly um, revolutionized that as a captain and as a player you know I think Richie was one of the first leg spin bowlers to bowl around the wicket and take wickets get attack and try and get get guys out uh, and he loved that about the way we you know we currently play he loved that we try we try and bowl opposition teams out but he always played the game in the right spirit and that's something I think today's players um, certainly as current captain of the Australian team that we need to continue to look up to the way he was able to play tough on the field but he had the ultimate respect for the game of cricket I mean, he loved Australia and he loved to see Australia doing well, but more importantly, he loved to see cricket doing well. He loved the idea that cricket should be entertaining and if there was a good entertaining game from, with the West Indies or Pakistan or England, he, re he reveled in it. Yeah, he certainly did. I'll, I'll never forget 2005 when we lost the Ashes, my first Ashes series, that Richie was all about what an unbelievable test series. And as a young player, I was so shattered that we'd lost the series. But, you know, Richie cared more about the game and the entertainment of the game than, you know, actually who won and, and who lost. He, he was obviously um, passionate about winning and loved seeing Australia have success, but he was more passionate about the game. Well, Michael, he had all class and you can't buy it. He walked tall and he walked tall in all forms of life. So uh, we will miss him and uh, thank you very much for joining us this evening. It's a privilege and, and I know as an Australian captain, you had great admiration for him and that's been shown over the years of your uh, tenure. So well done. Thanks, Ken. Okay, back to you, Georgie. Thank you, Ken. And you can watch a special tribute to Richie Benno, A Marvellous Life on Nine tomorrow night at 7pm.